Right, well today, seeing as Chris has put a query in my direction, we've got a rather immaculate Midland 4001. And it's dated January 1982. It's got the original side things for that kind of slidey brackety thing which it, they came with. And the customer doesn't have a power lead for it, so we're providing one. And we'll see what it needs doing or not. And I'll try and answer Chris's snags at the same time. Now, although we have the full manual for the Midland 2001, which is a similar chassis, um, we've got the original instruction book with the diagrams blown up out of that. Uh, for the 4001, there are some very slight differences. And you've got a coil less on the uh, 4001. And um, of course, you've got this antenna warning indicator thing on the 4001. So, we'll start off with the VCO and we'll take it from there. Test point for the VCO is next to jumper 2 there. Just like on the Max Commander the other day, my test prod doesn't go deeply enough down to actually locate the test point. So I'll set the radio to channel 40. And we're looking for 2.5 volts. Oh no, it's not channel 40, it's channel 1 on these. Ah, glad I looked at that again. And it's 2.5 uh, volts on the test point. So I've just got to locate it the other side of the board now. Which is easier said than done. Right, I've uh, set the VCO. I've had to do that off camera because I've had to swizzle the um, radio around and uh, juggle it. Um, so that's now checked. It, uh, if you need to adjust this, it's um, coil 116 there, and in this radio's case it's still sealed with wax. What I have had to do off camera, behind the scenes, is that the microphone, there was no audio going through the microphone, which as you can see is the factory original one, and I thought, is it a broken lead? No, it's not. The switch was so dirty, so I've used the service hole switch cleaner, stripped the microphone down, put it back together, and uh, proved that the radio works in PA mode. Um, which is always a good test for a microphone, testing one too, Wallow. So um, there you go, so we'll pop that now back into there and we'll proceed with the transmitter. So clearly that's one snag which it's come in for repair for, no transmitted audio. The other snag, as I said, I hadn't got a power lead for it. So just zoom in a bit. Right. First of all, transmit is the first transmit is 107, and 107 is that coil on the left there. These don't have a high-low power switch, which was a bit naughty because it's part of the requirements of MPT 1320. But Plustronics, who were the importers, did do an optional attenuator to get themselves out of that situation. That was loud, wasn't it? I'll switch myself to channel 20, will help if we tune it in the middle of the band there. What are we doing? Uh, oh, it's, um, it's actually doing 4 watts. Anyway, this is the tuning procedure. I say 116 is the, uh, 107 is the first one. That's fine. The second one is 109, which is to the right of there. That's fine. The third one is 108, which is towards the back there, and that's of course fine. The fourth one is 110, which is the open coil towards the back there, and that's fine. The next one is filled with wax and is I've used the yellow tool for, but with this radio working properly as it is, I'm not going to disturb that, so that's the that would have been the next one. And the final one, which is I will disturb, is um, 
it'll come to me. It's 115. I will disturb that because I just want to make sure that it's just that little fraction more than what it is. At the moment it's kind of 3.95 watts. So may as well give them their money. And there we have it at four. That's lovely. So that's the transmitter tuned up now. Chris has problems uh, with his transmitter. So you line up. You're going to check the VCO. So remember, it's uh, number one, number two, number three. 110 is the next one. 111, and finally 115. Of course, if any of them got broken, cause a need replacing because that could be his snag. Now you said you've checked the output transistor in this one's case it's a 2SC 2078 for those of you who don't know the transistors often just say C 2078 it means 2SC 2078 and the driver just check you've got the right driver in this one's case uh, Chris it's a 2SC is it 2314 in these yes it is it's a 2SC 2314 on the driver transistor so just make sure that one's correct as well so, 2SC2314, 2SC2078, if they've been messed about with, then you know what the score is. And that's what my set looks like at the bottom. My set, my customer's set. So, you know, there's no solder splodges or anything there. Right, we'll carry on with the procedure. And the deviation is RV105, so we'll do that. And RV105 is the preset. Um, um, um. There. Let's just get the oscillator out. Centralise that on the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Looking at the right hand oscilloscope. Very, very low. Like 0 0.5 or something like that. See how that goes now with the whistle test. Oops, that's over the top. Interesting. I'm just going to listen to it on a monitor receiver. I've got a realistic um, one of those by my side as a monitor. Testing one, two, Wale. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that sounds absolutely fine. I'll just try it once again. Wale, Wale. Yep, great. Let's turn that camera off. So that was really low, so the deviation was only 0 0.5 and there's no transmitted audio coming from the mic till I sorted that out. So no wonder it's coming for service work, but come on, it's 30 years old. Next we'll just check that, I can't do low power because it doesn't have low power, so the only thing that's left is to do the RF power meter on the front of the set. That should of course read 4 watts. That's interesting, I'm getting the antenna warning light come on. And I'm into a dummy load. Hmm. I will just adjust that because it's showing it as five. The RF meter, that was the deviation RV105 and the RF meter is RV103 just behind it. So we'll just turn that down a fraction.
Now I can't be having a high SWR because we're on a, a test set with a dummy load. So I presume we need to set the um, antenna warning indicator. I've never had to adjust one of these before, so it's. I presume we adjust it till the light goes out on a dummy load. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. I think the controls are a little dirty, so we'll just give it a quick uh, service hole spray. I'll just wind it round carefully a few times. Yes, it, that's the lights extinguished having cleaned that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something very, very naughty. I'm going to just unplug the aerial because at the moment you've got the TX light and the antenna warning indicator. I'm just going to unplug that for one fraction of a second and it doesn't come on. That's uh, really useful. Okay, I just had to pause that a second to just set up the um, antenna warning indicator a little bit better. And I've done that now, so that does light up if I just pop the antenna connector off for a second. So, oh, we just need to set the frequency, make sure that's right. It should be 27.79125 on channel 20, which is where we are. So, it is the trimmer capacitor 204, which is the red one down there. Let's just check that. 27.79082, so it's dropped with age, which is what you expect. It's getting there. Yep, that's 27.79125. So that concludes the transmitter.